for many years, her identity was under wraps. Known as Pit Girl and Jane Pitt, Virginia Montanez has been a big voice in Pittsburgh. Her passion and platform has always been writing, which led her to her latest book, Nothing Everything. We recently sat down with Ginny to talk about her book and life. Take a look. Jenny, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you for having me. And I think a lot of people know you from so many different things, but we really wanted to talk with you because you just came out with this new book and the cover is beautiful. I, I have to start there because I'm so drawn to it. It just, I, it brings you right in. So the t title of your book is Nothing Everything. Right, the title's Nothing Everything and the cover is really important to me. It's got a little bit of space in there and it's a, the character's not the main character, it, but it's someone that I am emotionally connected to in the book. Um, and Nothing Everything, that title, you know, it's gonna pop up several times in the book. It doesn't, I can't even tell you exactly in one way what that title means. It's something where you have to read it and go, oh, yeah. oh. and then later on you go, oh. So, um, but yeah, that's where I'm. I have to tell you that um, ever since I moved back home to Pittsburgh, you know, you start to kind of like pick up on these names, these true Pittsburghers that have a, a real connection to our city. And I feel like you are in that top 10, like you are a Pittsburgh, you are an icon here in the city. You've become that way. You've, oh my. You're kind of a voice of a lot of people in many different ways. How do you feel like you were able to develop that? Well, first of all, that's a huge compliment. Um, you know, that's, that's a huge compliment. I was able to develop it, I would say, through humor, honestly. Uh, just looking at the city with a little bit of humor and writing consistently about the city. And I think there was just a need for that, this, this lighter side of everything that goes into making Pittsburgh what it is. So I think that's what it was that helped me to get people. And you started out, um, one of the things you were doing was a blog, and you kind of had a, an, a pen name if you will, Jane Pitt. And that was, well, actually it was Pitt Girl. Pitt Girl, which is right, right. Worse, um, yeah, it was just, what it was was you have to, when you start a blog, you it, back then, yeah. first name, last name, and I didn't want to put my real name. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna be anonymous, so I'll go Jane Doe. I was like, oh, that's so, oh, Jane Pitt. And then it was like, okay, well, what's your other name? And I was like, Pitt Girl. <laughs> it was like at three <laughs> seconds of my life, and that was back in 2005. Well, so let's get back to your book. So tell us what this book is about. I have so much, I have such difficulty with that question because <laughs> it is about so many things. If I have to distill it down, it is a funny but heartwarming book about a damaged woman who is trying to figure out how to fix her damage. Yeah. And the themes are, there's unconditional love and there are people who are stronger than you think they are. And those strong people and those people that give you unconditional love help you heal. And so I wrote it because I was just in a place where I needed to heal and writing it sort of was my way of saying, there's healing out there for you. There's hope out there. Everything's gonna be okay. Um, but it's mostly funny, I will say that. It's a funny book. So it's, it's got the humor in it. It's not about, this is not your story. It's not my story. I, I'm, I'm very careful about that. I, my first draft was my story. Yeah. Um, but that's mine. Yeah. I don't want anyone to know that. And it's my story. So um, second draft I went through and this is what came out. And it's not my story, it's my emotions. It's your emotions It's that my came emotions, it's, it's a little bit of my suffering and my desire for happiness. I mean, aren't we all seeking that too? Yes, we are. We are all, we all have this, this front we're putting on, every one of us, but what's here? And this book is about trying to maintain this front of everything's okay, I'm fine. When sometimes we are down here. No, yeah. none of us are okay all the yeah, time. That's right. Um, but some of us are definitely more damaged than others. And so this is a book where you get to laugh on the way to healing. I always love um, talking with people who are multifaceted. I mean, you, you combine so many of your different kinds of loves. And because you love writing and because you love this city so much, you also started a different project, which is kind of why we're sitting right. right here. So tell us about Pittsburgh Remains to be Seen. So Pittsburgh Remains to be Seen, it's almost easier for me to tell you what it's not, because <laughs> it, that's what confuses people. It is not a map of 
things that used to be there. That's not how we want to imagine this. What this is, is a map of remains that you can still see from buildings and things that are no longer there. Yeah. So I'm not just going to say, okay, in this field there was, no, there's going to be a remain that you can see of something that's gone. And this maps out all of those artifacts or those remains. So it's Pittsburgh remains to be seen. And so tell us about this So this is here. one, this is one of the first ones I added to the map and I love this one. This is the bronze sculptures that were on the front of the, they were on the portals of what was the Manchester Bridge. So the Manchester Bridge was right here at the Mr. Rogers statue. That is, that's the one end of the Manchester Bridge and it stretched into the point. So this entire thing was on the south end, the point end. And so that bridge was built in 1911 to 1913, and these were added in 1918. So if you go on my map, you're gonna be directed to this spot so that you can come see them, but the pictures are going to be the actual bridge so that you can see this entire sculpture on the bridge. You know, I, I have learned a lot about you over the years and following you on social media and different platforms. Um, and you, you mentioned about your voice and that you found your voice through some of this and, and really sharpened your voice through all of this. What do you hope that people learn through getting to know you on social media and various outlets? It's not about me, um, so I'll rephrase that a little bit. Um, what do I hope people will learn from the things that I do? Um, from my book, I hope that they'll learn that books can give us an escape again, and books will make us, they can make us happy and give us hope. We're forgetting our history, we're losing it a little. We have nostalgia for the more recent things, Steelers type things, you know, we're, we're, we've got that sense of nostalgia, but the history, 1900s, 1800s, that's what keeps us grounded in who we are. And if we lose that connection, we're not going to probably be everything we can be. All right, and lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this too, because you've also used your voice in another way recently um, in, in talking about cleaning up the city yes. in Western Pennsylvania. And that has led you to a whole different, a different path too. Yes, and you know what? It's one of those things where until someone points something out to you or until you notice it, yeah, um, and then it's just like, oh my God, it's everywhere. Like not see it. yeah. It's like lantern flies, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're everywhere. That's what happened with me, with the state of litter, especially after the pandemic. It was just once I noticed it on a specific ramp, my eyes just kind of went. It's everywhere. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's everywhere. And I, so I started doing things on my own just to at least feel like I'm doing something. I was emailing PennDOT. Like, can you come clean the ramps? Can you do something? Is any, does anyone care? So basically, I just made an annoyance of myself. Um, <laughs> and, but I am also out there trying to clean up on the rivers. Uh, I've been talking with Allegheny Cleanways lately on ways I can help them moving forward. So yeah, that's my little like pet project now, like stop littering. Stop littering. <laughs> Please. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for sharing a copy of your book. I'm so excited to read it and for everything that you do for the city and being a voice for I so many. I appreciate that. Thank you. It was really great to sit down and talk with her. And you can find a copy of Nothing Everything on Amazon and locally at the White Whale Bookstore, too. We'll be right back after the break.